Welcome Bitcoiners, welcome traders, welcome subscribers, welcome followers, welcome supporters, welcome haters, welcome Bitcoin negators, Bitcoin deniers, all of you guys, all of you guys are welcome. Welcome, come on in to uh, another live with Oliver Velez. Of course, my name is Oliver Velez, and we're going to talk our favorite topic today, Bitcoin. That's right. Again, again. Come on in, make yourselves comfortable. I, I know I can't see everyone's posts, but I am, for whatever reason, able to see some people's posts. Let me know where you're coming in from. Let me know what corner of the world you're piping in from, what country, what county, what state, what continent. Let me know. Talk to me in just a, just a bit. We're going to wait for a few additional people to log on before we get started. Love from Canada. All right. Welcome, Canada. All right. Good morning, Jeremy. Hope you're all doing well. I hope your weekend was a very nice one. Restful, vibrant. Back at the game here this week. It's an exciting week here, guys. All right. Fantastic. Uh, I see some of you piling in. Talk Bitcoin to me. Yes, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk Bitcoin. Awesome. Awesome, guys. All right. So I like to wait for at least 100 people to sort of log in before I get started. And we're at 140 right now. So that's fine. We can start. Um, hopefully, uh, we can get this stream up a bit because I think this is a very important talk today for people who are either thinking about exposing themselves in their lives to Bitcoin or those who have recently exposed them, themselves in their lives to Bitcoin. I think this topic, um, this topic is probably most valuable to them, but it's valuable to any uh, any Bitcoiner, as far as I'm concerned. And the main thing that we're going to focus on today is knowing when you are actually acquiring what I would call, for lack of a better phrase, cheap Bitcoin. This is one as simple as this is, guys. This is one of the cruxes of proper market play being able to know when your accumulation area or your buy area is cheap inexpensive discounted on a relative basis based on the item that you're purchasing those who have the greater ability to correctly assess whether or not to correctly assess prices that are considered cheap and discounted versus prices that are not so cheap. All right. The people who are able to do that better than others, they're the ones that get wealthy in financial markets. They're the ones that excel. They're the ones that increase their lives. They're the one ones that heighten their level of their level of uh, financial freedom and independence. The ones that are able to distinguish between discounted prices and non-discounted prices. And so today, we're going to cover three specific ways in which you absolutely know from a mathematical perspective, from an historical perspective, that I absolutely know purchasing Bitcoin here is cheap, it's discounted. All right, we're going to go over three discount models. Okay, let's go. Hawaii, welcome. Welcome, Hawaii. All right, let's go. So let's start this. The three levels of Bitcoin cheap. Okay, I strongly encourage that you maybe, um, in addition to grab, grabbing the beverage of your choice, grab something to take notes with. All right, three levels of Bitcoin cheap, discounted Bitcoin. Awesome. Brooklyn's in the house. Love it, Strata. Okay. The first discount model is whenever you are buying or purchasing Bitcoin below last cycle's high, you are getting Bitcoin at a discount. I'm going to repeat that. Discount model number one. As long as you are purchasing anywhere below last Bitcoin's last cycle high, you are grabbing Bitcoin at a dis 
discount. Now, based on this model, the last cycle high was at 69. This occurred in November of 2021. All right. After that, Bitcoin goes into its typical one year bear market, leaving 69 as the high water mark. We today have come off of the low of that bear market after the peak in 69, around 15,500. And we're now sitting at roughly 55,000. 55,000 is less than 69. You are still today, this moment, this instant, this nanosecond, you are purchasing Bitcoin. If you're purchasing, if you're accumulating now, you are purchasing and accumulating Bitcoin at a discounted price. Now, why is this a discounted price? Why is purchasing Bitcoin below last cycle's high discounted? Because Bitcoin has never, ever, ever in its entire history not superseded its prior cycle's high in the following cycle. But not only has it not always superseded it, it has superseded it by a lot, not by a little, not marginally, by a truckload. So for instance, the last cycle high in Bitcoin was just under $20,000. We not only last cycle superseded $20,000, we went to almost $70,000, 69,000 for 400 and change to be exact, almost 70,000. And the prior peak was 20,000. All right. This now the prior peak that we're dealing with is 69. If history's any guide, not only is Bitcoin going to take out 69 with authority because we all, we know it temporarily did that earlier this year. But not only is it going to take out 69 with authority, it is going to take it out by a lot if history is any guide. And let me, news alert, history is a guide. Okay? So not only are we headed based on history, uh, past 69, we're, weighed, we're, we're, we're poised to go past 69 by a big amount, okay? All right, now that, how big is debatable, but we just know big. That's what Bitcoin has done every single time, every single cycle in its history. And so as long as you are purchasing Bitcoin below the prior cycle, you are getting discounted Bitcoin. I'm not saying that you can't purchase Bitcoin above the $69 level, above the prior peaks high. I purchase Bitcoin virtually every single day of my life. That's my DCA, all right? Any excess fiat that comes in, I have fiat that comes in on the hour, 24 hours a day. I don't need it to live. I don't need most of it to live. The majority of what I don't need goes right into Bitcoin every single day. Now, it's not a specific amount because my amounts vary per day, but it's virtually every single day. And I've been doing this since the beginning of 2020. I've virtually purchased or acquired more Bitcoin virtually every single day of my life since the er since early 2020. Now, others might have a regular DCA program. Maybe their DCA is $100 every week or you know whatever. They might have a bi-weekly or a monthly. I believe that your DCA should never stop. What I'm talking about is anything over and beyond your DCA. So if you are acquiring $100 worth of Bitcoin every single week, and I think that's cool because the number one goal is to become more Bitcoin rich every week than you were this week than you were last week. So as long as you can do that for the rest of your life or, or for, the, for as long as human beings are willing to give up the most valuable item on planet Earth, the hardest money, the hardest asset, and soon to be the most valuable item on Earth for paper coupons, as long as human beings are willing to give you the most valuable, scarcest thing on earth for paper money, then you do that every single week or every single day or every single bi-weekly or every single 
month, whatever your period is. And that is something you should do irrespective of price. I don't care if you think Bitcoin's overbought. You should never stop your DCA. Your goal should always be this Sunday, I have more Bitcoin. Today is Monday. This Monday, I have more Bitcoin than I did last Monday. And that's the only thing that matters. Everything else is freaking noise in the world. All the news is noise. All the financial metrics, all the talking heads on CNBC and Bloomberg, da, 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 da. none of that matters. The only thing in life that matters is today. Do I have more Bitcoin on this day, this week, than I had on the same day last week? And that should be your life's mantra going forward here. With that being said, we should also know when it's appropriate to maybe put some extra shekels into Bitcoin because Bitcoin is trading at discounted prices. So what I'm talking about is anything over and beyond your normal DCA. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you want to beef up, you need to know, am I beefing up in Bitcoin at a discounted price? And I'm telling you that as long as you're doing that below the prior cycles high, you are accumulating Bitcoin at deeply at a, at a discounted price. Why? Because in short order, Bitcoin every single time not only takes out the high of that 69, that prior cycles high, it takes it out by a lot. Now, let's move on. If we take a look at the actual chart, I just took this image right now for you. All right. So you can see that horizontal line there is at 69,000 more or less. OK, and we are currently under the, 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 the line. Now, again, history is our only guide. It's the only thing we have to rely on. And that guide tells us that that horizontal line will be taken out. In short order, what do I mean by short order? Over the next 18 months, by a lot. Why over the next 18 months? Because this Bitcoin specific for your cycle typically ends at the end of 2025. So from now until the end of 2025, we're talking about 16 months or so, 18 months, give or take. All right. Now. That's, in my opinion, short order. Now, I know a lot of people out there or a number of people out there are, are starting to popularize and promote the idea that Bitcoin won't have any cycles going forward. And I'm not saying that's a zero possibility. But until I see it, I'm going with the cycle theory. All right. Bitcoin is a very cyclical protocol. It every 20, 2106 blocks, it has a difficulty adjustment. All right. Every 510,000 blocks, it has a having that's roughly four years. I think I got that number right. If I've got the number wrong, excuse me, but it's roughly four years. Every four years, Bitcoin halves or cuts in half its issuance rate. It does. Every, roughly every 10 minutes, it issues new Bitcoin into the world. It does things very systematically, very mathematically, and very cyclically. And because of that, I think that its expression in the price-based market will also be cyclical. And until I see otherwise, I'm going with what has always been. I've never truly understood, I've, even as a professional market participant for over four decades now, I've never, under, and an educator of traders for the last three decades, 30 years, I've never understood the human propensity to trust what has never happened more than what has happened. Hear me out on this, people. I've talked about this many times, but... It's worth repeating because repetition has a certain value, right? I see this so much on Bitcoin Twitter as well, more so because Bitcoin Twitter is filled more with slightly more unsophisticated people from a financial point of view. And that's okay. You know, it's okay. 
But I see a greater trust in the what if than the what is and the what always has been. And this has never really made sense to me. Why would you give more credence to something that has never happened, which means that it's just an imagined image in your mind? If it's never happened, it's only it's mental. It's it's a freaking Disney movie you're playing in your freaking mind. All right? Or if it's bad, it's a horror movie that you have created. So you create this possibility. And I don't even give it the respect of a possibility. You draw this picture in your mind of something happening that has never happened in life. Never, ever. And you give that more trust, that more loyalty. You give that picture in your mind, that thought, that stupid idea. And I'm going to call it stupid because you have no basis for it. You have zero basis for it because it's never happened. You don't have history behind you. You don't have math. You don't have any statistical model behind you except an ethereal thought. So this ethereal thought somehow becomes more important to you than what has happened every single time over the past 15 years. It doesn't make sense. Why would you negate reality? over your own mental creation. What do we call that when you think that what you think is more important than what is? What do we call that word? How do we describe a person who gives greater credit to what they think and what they create in their minds than what is staring them in the face as reality? What is and what has always been? We call that freaking ego. And ego will get you killed in the financial markets. Ego will get you killed in life. You understand? So when I always tell you that history, if history is any guide, and it is, this is what I'm talking about. History or, re, or what has, has been real is the only legitimate thing we can rely on. Every other supposition is a creation by ego. And it should not get the highest respect from us. What has always been should get the highest respect from us. And so let me bring this back home. What has always been? Bitcoin has always taken out the prior high by orders of magnitude every single time. And until that stops, I'm going with reality. I'm not going with your own, your mental, you, the mental creations of bozos out there. Drawing lines on chart. Well, I'm drawing lines on chart too, but you know, drawing their lines on chart, trying to map out the future based on nothing. You know, I'm not doing that. And let me tell you something by going my whole career, I've just bet on history. I've bet on what is. I've bet on what is factual based on repetitiveness. And it has done me extraordinarily well in my business. And I've seen people bet their lives on shit that has never happened. I've seen a lot of people go broke that way. I don't want that to be you. All right? I don't want that to be you. <laughs> All right, Strumber says facts. It is facts. I'm telling you. So we know. Now, we know that we don't have a 5,000 year history. We've got a 15 year history. But every single time Bitcoin takes out its prior high. So if you are buying by orders of magnitude. So if you are buying under that prior high, you're getting Bitcoin as a freaking discount. So go out there and smash that buy button with confidence, with authority, knowing this is cheap Bitcoin. All right. Beat number one. That I beat that first horse to death. Let's go to the second horse here. All right, we got another one here. Oh, by the way, this is what, if history is any guide, and it is, this is what we should be dealing with. This is what we should be seeing. Right into late 2025. How do I know? History. It's happened every freaking time. And until it stops happening, that's what I'm going with. All right. 
Now stare at it and tell me, should this occur, are you today purchasing Bitcoin at discounted prices? Of course you are. Of course you are. All right. Awesome. Relentless warrior. Awesome. Okay. Let's go to number item number two, how you know you're getting Bitcoin at discounted prices. Whenever you are purchasing below the last halving price, same concept as buying below the prior cycle high is if you can also get Bitcoin below the prior having price, that's a deeper discount. You see, the prior having price is always less than the cycle high, the prior cycle high. So now we're going into deep discount zone two. Under the prior high is zone one. Under the prior having price is zone two. We're getting deeper in the discount. Now, Bitcoin's having price happened around 61, 62, 60. In the, in the low 60s, we are currently trading at 55. So, oh, we're shit. We're 56. Bitcoin always pumps when I do this. I know it does. It, it just always freaking pumps. Guys, I'm bringing up. Let me, let me just fix this. I did this for you, removing the price, which we'll get to, but put the price back on here. And uh, get this. Look at that pump. Nice. All right. Cool. Beautiful. Love it. All right. Let's get back. So we're at 56 now. Okay. So that's still decently under 62. You are in deep discount Zone two for Bitcoin. You can buy, smash that buy button with confidence. Iris, don't worry about the freaking little tiny gyrations here. This is naughty. This is the, you worrying about the little tiny guys. Look, you worrying about the little tiny gyrations here. And oh, well, and do I get 56 or do I wait for 55? And that, 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 that. This is dumb. Do you understand? These this is like saying someone saying like, you know, should, do I do I pick up bitcoin here at 50 at at 56 cents or do I wait for it to reach 55 cents back in the old days? It's the same. It's the same. You understand? It's the same. Um we're that early that it's just as ridiculous to think, do I wait for, it's 56 now, do I wait for 55? It's just as ridiculous as, we're so early, it's just as ridiculous as someone in the old days of Bitcoin saying, should, wait, it's 56 cents, oh my goodness, it left me, should I, should I wait for it to drop to 55 or 54 cents? Stupid, nobody today is going to care. You're not even going to care whether you picked up Bitcoin at 55 cents or 56 cents or 54 cents today, right? In 2033, it's not even going to matter whether you got Bitcoin at 56, 55, or 54. This is freaking fractions of a penny. We're that freaking early. Now, you're... We're not so early in one way. We're not so early in terms of getting one full Bitcoin. That's disappearing. That time is disappearing. We're early in the entire lifespan of this new species. That's right. I called it a freaking species. It's even more than a new species. But in the, in the, the lifetime of this new species, it is early. Your time is running out to get to one Bitcoin. And if you're already at one to get to the next milestone, which is 10. And if you're already at 10 to get to the next milestone, which is 21, your window is shrinking exponentially quickly. And we're not early as far as that's concerned. All right. 
So if you are buying under 62, congratulations. You're getting double deeply discounted Bitcoin. Discount zone number one, under the prior cycle high. Discount zone number two, under the halving price. We just had a halving price in April, April 19th to be exact. So this is the price we're dealing with. All right. There you go. That is number two. I think I've got something else to show you here. Um, the third and final discounted price is based on Bitcoin's weekly 20 period MA. All right. I had a little space there. There should be a space, but the 20 weekly MA or the weekly 200, I mean 20, the weekly 200 period moving average. All right. That is what you see here. I just took this guys. So all I did, I think you saw it. All I did was hide the price so that the only item you see on the chart is the 200 period moving average. And one of the things I want to point I want to point several things out to you regarding this. Sometimes it's good to take out the noise, the price, and just look at the weekly 200 period moving average. And you realize that at no point in Bitcoin's entire history has the 200 period moving average gone into a downtrend. It has always been in an uptrend. It has taken rests. It is tapered off, but it is never tilted down ever. And I don't think for, um, I don't think it'll do so in the re in, 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 in the future for a very long time. So I want you, so that's the first thing I want you to understand. The weekly 200 period moving average never declines. How do we know? Well, we're using the only thing that we have. Remember this. The only thing we have is history. The only thing we have is what is factual and it has always been factual. It is factual that Bitcoin's weekly 200 period moving average has never declined. It is factual that each time, here's the second thing, that Bitcoin's 200 has gone into a taper, it has blasted off into an exponential explosion to the upside. So with that being said, I want you to take a look at every single tapering off of the 200. I'll get myself out of the way. Take, the, take a look. Uh, take a look at the tapering right before 2017. And boom, during 2017. Take a look at the tapering right before 2021. Boom, and take off. Um, you see these mild taperings and then a blast off. Now, in order to make the 200 rise, you've got to really be trucking. The Bitcoin price has to be trucking. It's a long-term moving average. So it takes an act of a divine act of a move up to move a, a moving average. So big, long and heavy. 200 is big, it's long, and it's heavy. So it requires exponential moves to the upside to cause it to rise. All right? It's not like the 20 period moving average that cause, doesn't need that much power to move the 20 period moving average up. But to move the 200, you've got to be trucking to do that. So I want you to note that there was a recent tapering off right around the end of 2022. So look at the space between 2020, look at, look at this space a little bit after 2023, and you'll see that tapering off. And we're now sort of in that the 200 period moving average is starting to rise again. And you always go into the exponential part of the rise later. So first it starts to rise. We're in that phase. And then it's the exponential jump, which we're going to be moving into very shortly. Now, with this being said, with the 200 being our reference point for the third and final discount zone, this is what I call the big one, guys. This is the generational wealth cheap zone. This is how you set your family up forever by buying Bitcoin whenever it is around or under. I'm going to repeat this, around, near or under the 200. You are creating 
generational wealth for your family. What I mean by that is generations not born yet will have freaking pictures of you, portraits of you in their living rooms. Why? Because you bought Bitcoin under the 200. That's right. If you go back throughout all of Bitcoin's history, this is every single time Bitcoin has either come near the 200 or slipped below. It has been a generational wealth opportunity. Go back to 2000, what is that, 15, 2015. Boom, generational wealth. Look at even 2019. It came to it. You don't have to break below it. Just You see how I drew that yellow zone? It's a little bit above and, some, and a lot below. So anything even slightly near is fine. You start there. You start your generational program right above this 200. And then you buy all the way down through it. That's right. It's a zone. You just buy starting right above the 200 and you buy all the way through it and you hope it goes through it. And let me just tell you this, the deeper it goes through it, the greater your generational wealth. And so if you go to 2009, it came to the 200, you go to 2020, pandemic collapse slips back below the 200. That is, you see that. 2020 slip below that was when i made my first dive into bitcoin the lowest price and the biggest purchase of bitcoin in my entire life to this very day was on between the days of march 12th and march 13th of 2020 and i pounded the table as my first entry into bitcoin and on top of that I brought 9,000 traders with me on that on those two days. How crazy is that? 9,000 of my traders followed me on those two days right there, generational wealth. Now, we go all the way, we go forward back into 2022, and you see that we not only in 2022 got below the 200, we got below it and stayed below it longer than history. Now, to me, I'm going to tell you what this means. Because all the prior times was slips below, slips below. The fact that this last one was not a slip below, it was an actual move below it and stay below it for a while, tells me the next move up is going to potentially make the last moves look like child's play. You think about this. I want you to think about that 200 period moving average like a freaking sl slingshot or bow and arrow. You pull a slingshot back, boom, shoot that pellet. You pull a bow and arrow back, shoot that arrow, Nice, right? You pull it back the same amount every time. Boom. 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 It's going to go a certain boom. You pull it back that same amount, but then some, and you hold that tension for a while. You know how, remember how they used to do, how did they do it in the, uh, the Olympics? They do it like this. <laughs> you know, you pull it back extra, that extra elbow, see the elbow, the extra. That thing is going to go, buddy. <laughs> so that's the way I look at this. It The beach ball was freaking held below the water longer, causing a more violent spring out of the water this time. I think Bitcoin's going to freaking melt faces. I, I don't think any of us are prepared. That's what I think. That's what this tells me. That this was a little different. 
And so far, we're getting evidence that it's true because Bitcoin's never been this, Bitcoin has never made a new high be, you know, before the halving ever. Bitcoin's never been trading this close to the prior cycle high at this point after the halving, never. This is the best performing Bitcoin having statistically in all of Bitcoin's life. So it's already showing you that this one's different. It's already showing you that I'm extra this time. And it is about to enter into its most powerful part of the year of the cycle. So not only the most powerful part of the year is the latter, latter, the, the last two and a half months of the year into the next year. Not only is that every year, but it's extra powerful every four years, that period of time, every four years after the having. So you got to add an extra layer of oomph to that power this year. Uh, you know, late October, November, December is always powerful for Bitcoin, but every four years it's extra powerful. And so we're in the extra powerful zone and you're still getting discounted Bitcoin. You're getting double deep discount. Remember what double deep is. Single deep is below the prior cycle high. Double deep is below the prior cycle high and the prior having price. We're in double deep still. And triple deep is generational cheap generational wealth under at near or under the weekly 200 period moving average that's when you're setting up generations not even born yet all right and so guys these are my four my three ways to 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 actually this is statistical it is mathematical it is factual and we can know based on Bitcoin's history that these prices are going to be made to look small because Bitcoin has always made prices under its prior cycle high, prices under its prior having price, and prices under its weekly 200 period moving average. It has always made those prices look pathetically small in the future, in the near future. We're not talking 20 years from now. We're talking months. All right. It's very powerful. Don't forget these three ways. Now, the, the, the last thing I wanted to cover with you today. All right. The, the last thing I wanted to cover with you today. Um, that I mentioned in my text was how Bitcoin, how I became wealthier this weekend via Bitcoin. That's right. I got wealthier this weekend via Bitcoin. And I want to, I want to explain this to you. So uh, let me go to a post of mine I want to show you. We're going to go back to this. You know I wasn't going to let it go. You know this. You know this. So let me do this. I will bring it up. Second, boom, there it is. You guys remember, you remember. All right, let's go over this. So I say, um, I comment on Pleditor's post here. I share it where he shared. Arthur Hayes's um, post, which said that he was saying that Bitcoin was heavy. He says, look, Bitcoin is heavy. I'm gunning for sub $50,000 this weekend. So we, we're out of the weekend now. This is Friday. I took a cheeky short like a freaking idiot. A bozo. Now, I have a lot of respect for Arthur Hayes. I don't respect his shitcoining. 
I don't respect a lot of things, but I do respect his, I mean, he's a bright guy. I respect him being early as far as a Bitcoiner. Um, I respect some of the things he's accomplished in the industry. Um, but, you know, oftentimes, guys, our heroes are taken from us. And this is one of them. All right. Uh, throughout my life, most of my heroes are gone. They've been taken out. They've been taken away from me via life, becoming wiser, becoming more knowledgeable and aware and becoming more in tune with my specific individual morality. And over this time, you just lose your, your heroes a lot of times. So this is one of them. All right. You know, to send this message to me borders on criminality. You know, this is stupidity to me. Now, he does say that, listen, pray for my soul. I'm a degen. Yeah, but, you know, there is a certain responsibility in my, my opinion that goes with being a a person of notoriety, of being a person that people listen to, they purchase your freaking letter and they see you doing shit like this. Like this is the this is the rarest thing human beings have ever come in contact with. It's statistically, mathematically, irrefutably the hardest money, the hardest asset on planet Earth that the world has ever seen. It has superseded real estate and gold as being the hardest to produce, which means is the scarcest, which means that it is soon to be the most valuable item on planet Earth. And you're sending the message that I'm going to short this thing. Like, leave that for the bozos, man. Your, your, your voice is too big to be sending stupidity like this. This is just my opinion. I'm sorry, Arthur. I'm sorry. But you know, I think our responsibility is higher, bigger, and more important than this urge within us to fucking gamble. You know, keep that shit to yourself. That's my view. All right. Anyway, I want to I want to I want to share this with you. So what I did was I said, okay. Let's see if this shitcoin Schiller has marked the Bitcoin bottom with his short. Right? Let's see if where he goes short actually turns out more or less to be the bottom. Let's see, maybe, because a lot of times this is a key sign that a big named influential person says, all right, I'm going short here. All right. Um, he either gets lucky or he gets wrecked, in my opinion. So, so far, it's not looking so good for him, but we'll see. So I posted where he went short. So he went short around 56,200, right? So what I decided to do was to show you, I'm going to do the opposite. So what did I do over the weekend? Arthur Hayes is short. I decided to purchase Bitcoin over the weekend, the same way I've taught you to purchase Bitcoin, or to purchase Bitcoin, all right, in a, 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 a declining Bitcoin market, right? And here I'm going to review what I've taught you. And anyone who wants to review the full session of how I taught this, you can always go back, all right, and look at the full session. I'm going to give you the abbreviated session now, all right? So, let me go back to, and I posted these purchases, right? So let me go back and I'll show you. So we're going to put this back. No, no, we're not going to do that. I'm going to remove that. We're going to take this and go back to charting here. And so good. So some of you will recall my institutional accumulation approach to Bitcoin. And I explained it very thoroughly. And one of the methods I explained to you was this. I told you 
to that to take the the price to take the price that bitcoin is at in tens if you're in the 60s we're dealing with the number we're dealing with 60 if you're in the 50s we're dealing with the number 5 so we're dealing with the number 5 we're dealing with the number 6 if we're in the 60s we're dealing with the number 5 if we're in the 50s so so we're talking about Arthur Hayes going short at 56 200 we're in the fives right that's 56 fives now what i do guys listen to me carefully what i do is i take the number 5 if we were in the 60s i take the number 6 but we're in the 50s i take the number 5 and i cut it in half what is half what is half of 5 it's 2.5 so every $2,500 down, boom, I'm hitting up Bitcoin for a smash buy. If we go to the 40s, I'm going to take the four and split it in two. And now it's every 2,000, boom, I knock my watch off. Those smash buys are powerful, right? I smash buy. If we go into the thirty thousands, I'm cutting three in half. Every one thousand five hundred dollars, I'm smash buying. Now this is in lieu of my dollar cost average averaging. All right, so dollar cost averaging never stops. What I'm talking about is that extra beefing up on Bitcoin. So because we're in the fifties, I use the number two thousand five hundred. Now let's go to the chart again, right? And I'll show you this. So. From 56, I decided to start from where um, from where Arthur started his shorting. So he started at 56 to 200. So let's say here. All right. Now you got a little drop there, but okay. So now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna round to 56. I'm gonna go to 2,500 down, right? So we go 2,500 down from 56. You know, you're at 2,000 down is 54, right? And then another 500 is, is 53.5. Now, I don't do the number five. So I always do five, eight or three. I don't do the five. I do use Fibonacci numbers, but I don't use the five. I always use the eight. So we're going two and a half thousand dollars down, which would give us 53 and a half. So I do 53, eight. So 53, eight. I'm going to show you that. Boom. Here's my buy. Okay. Now, um, I did. I decided here to do from here every one thousand down because I didn't think we were going to get to the forties. So I do another buy at fifty-two eight, and it's always bigger. So every buy down is bigger. That's why I'm doing the line bigger. So the first one is regular. The second one is bigger than regular. The third one is bigger than the second one and so forth and so on. So you build this, uh, this pyramid buy strategy where buy one, buy two, and buy three. Each buy is bigger. So, for instance, you did $100 at one, then $200 at two, then $300 at three, like that, okay? So, anyway, here the two major smash buys, like that. Now, I want you... Let me get this out of the way. Who won here? Who got wealthier here? Who got wealthier? Look, look at where we are today. From the starting point, we both 
Let me just do this here. We both. Ah. Started. We both started here. Oh, I can do it. I can do it with my. Ah, no. So we both started here. We're now here. I became more Bitcoin rich, adding more Bitcoin here. Now, we're there. Do you see what I'm saying? That it is not even mathematically sound to me to try to benefit on the way down on a short versus use the down to become more Bitcoin rich for the future because the future is mathematically skewed to the upside in a ridiculous way. It's not even small. It's not even like it's 50, it's 60, 40. It's exponentially skewed to the upside, to the downside. The downside does not make mathematical sense to me to try to benefit that way. Do you understand? It's like trying to say in a, in a, in a, neighbor, in a, in a very nice neighborhood where all the homes are going for $1 million and you're going to, you know, the, the last, so every home is going for $1 million and you're going to try to benefit by waiting for 600,000 or half a, it doesn't make sense. If every, for instance, every single year you're getting a 20% hike in price, a 20% hike in price. Bitcoin every four years is exponentially higher. To me, every down means a buy, not a short. Because mathematically, four years from now, you're exponentially wealthier if you buy that. Now, I know some people will say, well, Oliver, listen, some of these people are just, they, they're not thinking four years out. They're thinking they're thinking a weekend out. They're thinking a weekend out. And I get this. Listen, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm a professional trader. I understand. I've been trading for 43 years. I understand that. I understand, okay, well, Oliver, if I'm not thinking four years and I'm thinking the weekend, or I'm thinking a week, or I'm thinking a few days, I can be right four years like you and be right in the week time frame or the several day time frame can i no not statistically and consistently over time and the reason i've done the work on this guys the reason why this is stupid is because all of 85 plus percent of bitcoin's gains come over a 13 day period over an entire year. I want you to let these numbers sink in. 85 plus percent of, of the best performing asset in the history of mankind. 85% of that massive gain has come, has, has materialized over only 13 days a year. If you miss one, you're dead. Dead. That's how razor thin the math is. You miss one or two, you're dead. You're negative. Trying to trade this shit. You can't afford to miss one of them. It, it, it blows out the numbers. So what does this say? The, the vast majority of time, Bitcoin, time-wise, Bitcoin spins sideways to down. Mostly sideways, but down too. So sideways to down makes up most of Bitcoin's life, time-wise. But price-wise, it makes that up by orders of magnitude. This skewing, 
means that the best, the most scientific, the most mathematical model for winning every single time with this is to use sideways to accumulate regularly and down to beef up. Sideways, accumulate regularly, regularly, DCA, 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 down, beef up, beef up, beef up. Okay, sideways, DCA regularly, DCA regularly, down, beef up, boom, 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 comes back up, sideways, sideways, DCA, do. boom, take off, and it takes off and makes up in spades all of that sideways and downward flopping and flipping around. So it is the down that you use to become Bitcoin rich, not Bitcoin poor by going short. It doesn't work over time mathematically. Now, I'm not saying you can't get lucky. I'm not saying you can't even have a period, even a decent period of making money trading it. But I will tell you, keep doing it and you're going to find out. Keep Just keep doing it. And I promise you the math will make up. This is the ultimate casino where the casino is going to take your life away from you. Do you understand? It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't even make sense from a tax perspective. I tell people all the time, like, all right, this thing, Oliver, you know, I'm up big in Bitcoin. Should I take profits now? I'm like, why would you bring a bear market onto yourself and there's no bear market. Like if your if your tax hit is 40%, you're you're bringing a 40% bear market into your life right now. Like 40%'s got to disappear. Like all right, some people say well all over okay, well, my tax I've held it long term it's 20%. All right, so you're bringing a 20% like how bitcoin is bitcoin now doesn't drop 20% that frequently. You know, not like it used to. So you're bringing on the Bitcoin 20, 30 percent bear market onto yourself. And that's not even Bitcoin doing it. That doesn't even make sense to me. For something that is mathematically designed to make you wealthier, ev guaranteed every four years of your life, guaranteed. And there's some people like, Oliver, come on, guarantee. Yes, guarantee, dude. It, it's mapped out all the way to, two, to year 20, 2,136. Every four years, the issuance rate of Bitcoin is cut in half. What does that mean? It means that if the demand stays the same and the issuance gets cut in half, the supply gets cut in half, that's mathematical guarantee for price increase. In addition to that, more important than that, it makes it more scarce. More scarcity in a desirable item means higher price every single time. I didn't make this shit up. This is real. Nobody can argue with these things. Not if they have an IQ above 70. They can't. Below 70, yeah, but above 70, no. So take a look. I'll do it again. Who's wealthier? Who's wealthier today after this weekend? And I will be more consistently than any trader you can point to in the world and i'm considered one of the best in the world and think about that think about one of the most celebrated traders in the entire trading industry is telling you you can't trade this don't trade it don't do it what do you think that's worth and every single person who's telling you they can trade you does not have my pedigree, has never been a Wall Street trader, has never been a professional, 
has never been hailed, never got rewards as a trader, has never broken trading records, has never had, had books written about their trading prowess. That's me. And I'm telling you, you can't do this. I can't do it. And I know you can't do it. But what I can do is make myself Bitcoin richer every week. And what I can do is use these three discount zones to make sure that me, my family, and everyone and everything that I love is guaranteed to be worth more four years from now. And every four years after that, until I die and beyond. Have some, find a way to get some freaking patience. Find, dig deep and find some small measure of freaking loyalty and stop being so freaking disloyal to something so pure like Bitcoin. Stop it. Get some patience, find some freaking loyalty, and be loyal to the only thing that has never lied to you. Be loyal to the only thing that's never changed the rules on you. Be loyal to the thing that's still doing the very thing it's promised from day one. Be loyal to the thing that will, will never fuck you over, will never debase you, will never steal from you, will never take from you, will never lie from you. This is the only thing in life that we have. Every person in your life has failed you from your loved ones to the people to all the way to your enemies. Every single one. If you are a parent, you have children, your children have failed you at one point or another in, your, in their lives. If you are a child, your parents have failed you at one point or another in your lives. Every single person in your life has failed you. Every single entity, every single group, every single organization, every single friend, every single relationship in your life has failed at one point or another. This is the only thing that has never failed. The only thing that will never fail. And so I'm saying for, for the love of God, find some, give it some patience. It deserves it. Give it some freaking loyalty. It deserves it. And you give it those two things. It will take care of your life forever. <laughs> I appreciate that, JC. All right. That's it, guys. I'm done. I'm done preaching to you. <laughs> I'm done pounding the table for now. All right. All right. So I hope that uh, proved to be somewhat useful. Use it. Go out there. Don't let it go into one ear and out of the other like 80% like of the people do. Take this in. Utilize it. All right. You know what to do. Go to work. Ciao for now. Boom.